Hello friends. We are going to discuss a little about mucormycosis that is the black fungus which you have been all reading in newspapers and in social media. I will be also teaching about the microbiological diagnosis. Now when I say the spores of mucormycosis are ubiquitous in nature meaning it is present anywhere and everywhere in the environment. It is present in air, soil, it grows on decaying matter, it's saprophytic in nature, meaning it thrives its enrichment from growing on other organic material. You will find mucormycosis growing on simple things such as bread, household bread. Mucormycosis affects only a certain category of people. Let us discuss that one by one. The main predisposing factor these days is COVID-19. In fact, CAM, COVID-associated mucormycosis, has become an epidemic illness. But it is not the only cause. There are other factors involved such as steroids. Steroids, which is a part of COVID-19 treatment, is given for the better functioning of the lungs, which helps in the breathing function. And also, it helps to reduce the inflammation. Also, an immunomodulating drug. And pathogens such as mucormycosis, which is nothing but opportunistic fungal infection, causes steroid to be another predisposing factor. Steroids also brings up the glucose level in the human body. So a person who is already suffering from diabetes mellitus, gets COVID-19 and is on steroid treatment, is on a higher risk. Long ICU stays, usage of humidifier only making the favorable condition for the growth of mucormycosis. Surprisingly, an antifungal such as voriconazole increases the chances of getting this infection. Cancer patients such as leukemia are also susceptible. Macrophage is a first line defense mechanism for mucormycosis. So when the spores of mucormycosis from the environment enter the human body through nasal cavity or respiratory system, the first line mechanism that is the macrophages act on them by oxidative killing of the spores or by phagocytosis. This inhibits the germination of the spores to the mycelial forms. But in patients such as diabetes mellitus, the macrophage are dysfunctional. This is because of the low pH level due to the diabetic ketoacidosis condition. Neutrophils are also an important part in the defense line mechanism. Now when the stage of germination, inhibition of germination is surpassed or failed, such as in diabetes patient, neutrophils acts upon by phagocytosis and also this work is done by certain peripheral monocytes. But in cancer patients, when they are neutropenic, that is deficient in neutropenia, such as leukemic patients, these patients thus are more susceptible to mucormycosis. The most important pathogenesis in mucormycosis, which is causing the actual fatality and mortality in patients, is the character of angioinvasiveness. Now, mucormycosis invades the small and large arteries of human body and it causes this is the reason of the hemorrhage the infarct and the necrosis of that particular part post covid 19 all these signs and symptoms should be particularly kept in mind and let's discuss this one by one sinusitis the clinician should not mistake it for bacterial sinusitis this may not be a simple sinusitis. Also, one-sided headache, periorbital swelling, blurred vision, the drooping of the eyelid. One thing I want to bring to your notice is that the name black fungus given by the media these days is a misnomer. As to mucormycosis has never been known as a black fungus in the entire medical history. These black lesions are due to the necrosis of the tissue material and the black eschar that is seen clinically on site. Now the type of the sample is a very important part because that is the actual origin of your diagnosis. 
So the ideal sample should be any tissue material that is obtained after a FES surgery operation. It can be maxillary, sphenoid, any kind of tissue. But it should not be a swab because a swab is not an ideal material for fungus isolation. Also, the selection of which part of the tissue is very important. In the gross appearance, if you see any necrosed or black particle in the tissue, that has to be that has to be selected for the further processing for the KOH staining and culture. The very first test, that is, you can actually call the diagnostic test, is potassium hydroxide 10% or 40%, depending upon the type or consistency of the tissue. The potassium hydroxide not only dissolves the outer material of the tissue, but it also stains the fungal elements. Each and every laboratory should do a KOH test before any culture. It is actually the cheapest, the most diagnostic, and it gives the clinician a preliminary idea as soon as within one hour. Sharing with you a few cases which I have been reported in these recent days. In KOH microscopy, mucormycosis has a very diagnostic characteristic finding. The fungal elements you will see under the microscope under 40x are broad, ribbon-like, aseptic, that is no septa at all. Branching will be seen at 90 degree angle. In fact, in this slide, you can see actually the fungal element invading the tissue. It's a beautiful picture to see. In this one slide, or patient, I would say, I actually found the fruiting bodies, that is mucor. The surgeon told me that the mucor was actually growing inside. He could see the fungal elements inside itself. So when I already got the material, that is the tissue sample, this was the KOH made and you can actually see the sporangium, that is a fruiting body, which you usually see after five days on culture. So you can imagine the, the, the severity of the case. Mucromycosis on SD, that is Saborot dextrose agar, gives a growth uh, within 3 to 5 days. And the growth is typical cottony, fluffy, grey to white in colour. And they are usually known as lid, lid lifters. Why? Because they, they are so rapid in their growth that, you know, if, if they are inoculated in petri dishes, they will actually push the petri dish.
let us see how mucormycosis looks under microscope in an LPCB mount. So you can see all the hyphae have stained blue. Those are aseptate and you can beautifully see the structure of the round sporangium and you can see small spores in, into that. This is known as the multi-spored sporangium. Speciation of mucormycosis, is it mucor, rhizopus, rhizomucor or apsidia is based on the presence of rhizoids. Rhizoids are nothing but small branch like nodal structures. Uh, if you can see I have marked in this picture. In this next slide you can see how uh, there is the bursting of the sporangium and this is how the spores are spread into the environment. The reproduction of mucormycosis happens asexually with the spread of the spores. These are the pathological slides, the h &E slides. This is how the broad accepted hyphae looks like in an h &E. And the next slide is GME, that is the Gomori methanamine stain. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any doubts regarding pathogenesis or diagnosis of mucormycosis, please feel free to comment.